Dee Teslin is an offensive lineman for the NFL's Chicago Bears. Weighing in at 145 kilograms and standing 1.95 meters tall, Brett Bees' loss has been American football's gain. He graduated from Yale with a degree in economics and political science and credits American football for making it all possible. It's an unlikely story for a South African in America's most beloved game. I chatted to him yesterday. I grew up in South Africa and played rugby like lots of kids did and dreamt of becoming a Springbok rugby player, but um, that just wasn't my path. I went to Paul Rose Gymnasium, obviously a rugby powerhouse, um, but I didn't make the strides in my rugby career that I thought uh, was necessary in order for myself to become professional. So I stopped playing when I was uh, 16 years old, and I kind of just casually started watching American football and really developed a deep love for the sport. And when it came time to matriculate high school, I didn't really want to pursue the avenues that were available back home. There wasn't really a, a course or degree that I had a burning passion for and that I could see myself pursuing. So I decided to pursue American football and take a chance on that. And I'm really happy that I did. I uh, first went over um, halfway through my matric year to go do a football camp to get exposure to the sport. And then I came back motivated to try and find a way to get recruited. So I applied to do a postgraduate year at the prep school uh, in New England on the eastern coast of the U.S. and was lucky enough to get recruited. And here I am still playing football uh, seven or eight years later. It's just the most incredible story because for people that are native to Northern America, just to break into the professional structures or play even college American football, it is so difficult. What do you think set you apart other than your sheer determination? Yes, I really just believe that I had the physical capability and the talent to do it. So that's what really motivated me to pursue it. Um, obviously, coming from South Africa, it's a little unorthodox. Um, when I told my parents initially, they were a little bit skeptical, but once they could see how much research I had done and how much it meant to me, they were fully behind me. Um, but yeah, I just think that I first came over with the intention of getting recruited to play college football, which is a hard um, thing to do, but I managed to do that. And I just finished my third year in the NFL, which is also a very hard thing to do. And I think it's just hard work, determination, being willing to do more than everybody else and matching the things that you say you're going to do with what you actually do. So it's just a lot of hard work and determination. Do you feel like you maybe have paved the way for a couple of other South Africans or shown other South Africans that this is possible? I sincerely hope so. Um, the NFL is definitely making strides to expand its global footprint, more so in Europe and a little bit in Africa. But I really hope that it will be much easier, more accessible in South Africa, and I hope that I can play a part in that. It's a hard um, thing to establish there just because it's not culturally ingrained in South Africa, but I truly believe that there are a lot of athletes whether rugby players or track athletes that could make great American football players and they just don't know because they're not exposed to it. So I really hope that the footprint of the game can expand more in South Africa and that we have the infrastructure that can support those athletes so that they can have opportunities to come over to the U.S. to earn degrees and maybe even make it to the NFL. There is a real career, a real life-changing shot that you can make if you do have athletic ability and you can apply it to the game. Yes, and I mean, just numbers-wise, it is also very hard to make it into the NFL. I can't remember what the statistics are, but it's something like, you know, 2% of all high school football players get recruited to play Division One football and then like 1.2% get drafted who play college football. So it's a very small select group, but it's not even just about making it to the NFL. If somebody can earn a great degree and an education through football, and that's more than worth it. So I know that I'm really thankful for the game of football for what it allowed me to do and earn my degrees.
there's also a massive movement where there are a lot of South Africans, well-known South Africans from the rugby fraternity. Annika Meyer, Puerto Human, which unfortunately made some headlines for the wrong reasons the other week, but all behind this drive to grow the sport of rugby in Northern America. Were you ever, having established yourself in America, were you, how do you see the expansion of a game that you grew up playing? Yes, I mean, I'm aware of Major League Rugby uh, in terms of how they're trying to make strides there. But it's kind of like the flip reverse here. You know, rugby is not culturally ingrained here at all. Um, but you do have a lot of I've had former college teammates of mine pick up uh, club rugby and try and play club rugby. And they really enjoyed it a lot as a sport to play after they're done playing football. Um, but rugby's always grown. You know, people are much more exposed to global sports. I just don't think that it will reach uh, the pedestal that the NFL is placed on because the NFL holds a special place in the hearts of Americans. You know, I think of like the top 20 broadcasts last year, including, you know, big political events or concerts or whatever. The NFL was 17 out of 20 of those things. So it's the NFL is just has huge exposure in the in, in, in the states and it's really viewed as like a religion almost you know so how difficult was it coming from a country like South Africa with the history that South Africa does when it comes to race relations going into the NFL and you were breaking into the NFL right when the Black Lives Matter movement was really gaining traction as a South African from where you come from and the history of our country how did you deal with that, or did you feel better equipped to deal with that? Yes, I feel very well equipped to deal with that. Obviously, I'm in full support of everybody. I'm very much against discrimination of any kind. Um, I learned a lot um, at university just from an outsider's perspective about South Africa's history, and then obviously everything that happens in terms of uh, racial relations in the U.S. I was much more educated on that after university, so I'm happy to stand in solidarity with all of my teammates and support them, you know, and fight uh, racism and fight discrimination in all its forms. Can you tell us a little bit about the position that you play? Yes, so I play um, offensive line, and I specifically play the guard and center position. So there are uh, five total positions on the offensive line, two tackles, two guards, and then one center. And the center is the position that snaps the football to the quarterback on each play, so it's the guy who gets the play going. And then I can play both right and left guard. But it's kind of like the front row of football it's usually reserved for the biggest guys on the field and our job is to block the players on the defense so that they can't get to our teammates who are carrying the ball or uh, throwing the football so it's very physically demanding it's also intellectually demanding you are the guys taking all of the hits yeah, it's a little bit like a mushroom society because we don't ever carry the ball, get the score, the touchdowns, or anything like that. But without us, everything would fall apart. So it's it's a selfless position in that way. But I really enjoy playing it, and I relish doing it, and hopefully I can do it for many years to come. There's far more understanding around uh how dangerous sports where it is full contact actually can affect your rest of your life once you have finished playing in your mm-hmm. position where you are taking all the big hits. How do you view that? And is it something that you consider at all? Yes. I mean, it's in the back of everybody's minds. Um, every line of work has got its risks associated with it. Um, I really take comfort in the fact that the type of equipment that we're using now is privy to that information. So the headgear and things that we use nowadays is much better in terms of protecting players. And there's lots of rules that they're introducing to protect players in better ways. So I definitely am privy to that uh, information and I am wary of it. Um, luckily, I take comfort in the fact that I haven't played the sport my whole life, so I haven't 
suffered a ton of uh, repeated hits um, to the head. And all you can do is try and protect yourself so that you're healthy for the rest of your life. Um, but for me, the risks are worth it at the moment. And it's just the physical nature of the sport and something that you have to buy into. Have you got people from South Africa, young boys that have kind of asked you, like, how were you even able to do that, that are interested in your story? And what do you tell them? I just tell them, you know, you have to find a way to get over to the States if you're really serious about pursuing football, because that's the only way you're going to create a path for yourself. When I came over when I was 18 uh, to that prep school, it was a big leap of faith. You know, I didn't know whether anything that I was going to do was going to work out, you know, but I took that leap of faith in myself and it paid its dividends. So you have to really commit to the sport and you have to get good coaching because there it's just non-existent in South Africa at the moment, unfortunately. But I think that there are a lot of great athletes and that's not something that can be taught athleticism and smarts and hard work and all that. And if it's applied in the right manner, it can help guys to reach the stage of uh, college football and earning degrees and maybe even hopefully getting to where I am today.